Well, that was a doozy of a list. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Local Dragon Lady here, and it's the day after the ban list, and I'm sure you all saw my reaction and how happy I was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as entertaining as it was to, to see me uh, get stressed out over it, um, I figure like okay, I've I've had like 24 hours to let that information simmer down, so I'm gonna talk about the ban list a little more elaborately rather than just going down, scrolling down. It's like. <gasps> Oh my god, that's banned and that's limited? So, okay, yes, the cards. All right. Now, a lot of people are okay with this list, which is fine. I understand why a lot of people are perfectly happy with it. It does address some big problems with the game. For example, uh, the three cards that are banned, the three Link Monsters, you know, Mecha, Phantom Beast, Aurora Dawn, Prank Kids, Meow, Meow, Moo, Moo. <laughs> And the Proto Planet Bird Anaconda. The, these are like the best cards to go. I am completely happy with that. That is fine. The reason why, I guess the best way to say reason why I was discouraged is it seemed like Konami was more focused on unbanning old cards as opposed to limiting more cards to make the game more playable. Because right now, even with Product Plan, Anaconda, Meow Meow Mew, and, and Aurora Dawn being banned, there's still a ton of floodgates, and I was really, really hoping that Konami would go on with a purge, basically limiting a lot of the floodgates to one, like Skill Drain being the biggest one. I still can't believe that you're allowed to still have three of those. That is insane with such a low cost. Now, other changes, you know, kind of makes sense too. I was making fun of Jet Synchron. You can have one now in correspondence with Needle Fiber. Now you can do a lot of great plays with that. Jet Synchron to me is kind of like a uh, a different version of Glow Up Bulb. So there's going to be a lot of uh, synchro plays that uh, this you know that this is going to enable. Uh, like as a, as though we need more because. Uh, Sword Soul basically is just synchro spam. It's easy to synchro spam even if you only have one Needle Fiber, but at least with Needle Fiber being limited to one, uh, once it's out, it's out. You use the effect, if it goes to the graveyard, you can't exactly bring it back and reuse the effects all over again. Because uh, once it's Link Summoned, that's when you can, you know, summon a tuner from your deck or your hand and bam, you just go on with your plays with that. So. Yeah, that I mean, that's going to enable more plays. If it's going to be good or bad, oh gosh, I don't know. Before my pal monkey board, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't know how this is going to play out because I wasn't in the game when monkey board was a big problem. Like it was the best pendulum deck. I've heard a lot of horror stories. Apparently, a lot of people left the game during that time, and I think it was the only time that Konami made an emergency ban list addressing that problem. That the Pepe. Uh, deck so that was you know i was like okay i'm kind of glad i missed that on um that era of Yu-Gi-Oh. red rose dragon still perplexed me you know i i wasn't aware that was a problem but okay uh yada garasu like the old cards yada garasu and change your heart were the big ones change your heart basically is another way to enable zombie vampire now the zombie vampire to me is a really really good xe monster it's a generic rank eight uh, really good effect. Uh, you detach a material and you can send the top three or so four cards. Either way, both you and your opponent have to mill the top few cards from your deck and you can special summon a monster from either graveyard to your side of the field. So it's basically a full burial and monster reborn in one, which is ridiculous. And the thing is, you can enable this card even more by summoning it with if you take control of your opponent's monster because you can use two rank eights or if you use uh, triple tactics talent or mind control or now change of heart take control of your opponent's monster it turns to a kind of turns to a rank eight but you can use it as material to get out that monster it's just more bait shenanigans like that now is change of heart a card that every deck is going to use it might i mean i might use it because it was 
really, really good. And Yadagarosu, uh, Yadagarosu was crazy when it came out. Uh, it was the Yada Lock. I don't know if many people were around during that time, but I was. <laughs> okay, I mean, I know all about this card. I was there. Do not cite the deep magic to me. I was there when it was written. So how did the Yada Lock work? Well, it was dependent on three cards, the Chaos Emperor Dragon, Witch of the Black Force, and Sangan. Now, those cards don't really work that well with this combo much anymore because they're now errata, so you can't exactly uh, turbo into the Yada Lock uh, like you could. Now, I'm still nervous about this card because, listen, with so many cards out in this game, someone's going to figure out a consistent way to get Yada out attack and skip your opponent's draw phase and therefore they can't play anymore. Now, if all of you, anyone who watched my channel know I specialize in three decks. One is dragon slash blue eyes, rituals, and decks that can ruin your day. So I don't really have anything uh, quite perfected quite yet, uh, but uh, I slapped together a deck uh, in like 10 minutes <laughs> that uses the, the Yada, uh, Yada uh, the Yada Garasu and um, I haven't taken this online yet this is like a very rough draft I am going to refine it but Yada Garasu is a spirit monster so I'm gonna try and revolve uh, Yada Garasu with other spirit monsters and spirit support there's been so many cards that's released in the long absence I was in the game but here's a very rough draft that I have so far, and here's my reasoning behind those. So first things first, we have a Yadagarosu. He's a spirit, you normal summon him, he's gonna come back to your hand at the end of the turn, and if he does battle damage to your opponent, uh, they cannot, they have to skip their draw phase. So I am doing the whole ritual engine incantation, so we got the three talismans, books, the candles, and the pencil plumes, that, that's pretty straightforward. Um, I have two Shino Bird Pigeons, a spirit monster. Uh, once per turn, you can target one spirit monster on the field and return it to the hand. The reason why I have that is because Yada Garosu can be turboed out through uh, two other spirit ritual monsters. I, I have Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon as a, a form of assurance. He's practically a staple in most of my decks now. Cannot be targeted, destroy, double piercing, whatever. Uh, now, two Boyfriend and two First Lady. Now. First Lady is going to be the most important one because once, he, once she's ritual summoned, she can bounce three of your opponent's back row cards and shuffle them into the deck. But once you do that, you can special summon a spirit monster from your deck, ignoring the conditions. Because the thing with these spirit monsters, they can't be special summoned. Boom. But you can get Yadagarasu on the field in this method. Uh, because it's special summoned, you can normal summon a Shino bird uh, pigeon. So what happens is if you were to uh, get rid of your opponent's field and back row through the you know, first lady and with boyfriend, because he bounces three cards back to your opponent's hand. So you can swing with boyfriend, swing with peacock, you know, uh, with the first lady, swing with Adagarasu, and um, in main phase two, if you were to normal summon the pigeon, you can just bounce this guy back to the hand because once he's special summoned from the deck, ignoring the conditions. He's not going to get the effect to return to your to return to your hand because you have to be a normal summon in order to do that. Uh, with these rituals, though, these guys do bounce back to your hand anyway and replace them with tokens. Um, one cuddle bug. Uh, now this deck is a going second deck, but if you're forced to go first, that's fine. You can get out the Drake Overlord on the field so your opponent skips their main phase one. They can't battle you, and they have to build their their board on main phase two. You go and you just bounce off all the cards with these guys, and uh, you can try and get your Yada, uh, Yada Garasu. Now, there's another way to get Yada Garasu. Uh, that is with Power Spot, Shino Bird Power Spot. This is a permanent magic card. It says Spirit Monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. If a face of Wind Monster you control returns to the hand, during a damage step, you can add one spirit monster or ritual spell card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect uh, once per turn. So the principle behind this is you ritual summon out either boyfriend or first lady. They come back to your hand. Bam, this triggers. You can search your deck for yet a Garasu or one of the other ritual cards, the calling card, Shinobur Calling. You know, you can 
This uses a ritual summon your uh, boyfriend and first lady with levels that equal or exceed. You can search for your Inception. Inception allows you to ritual summon any ritual monster, providing tribute materials are incantations. So I also have two incantation chalice slimes, so this can get your engine going. Pre preparation of rights, this will help you search out both boyfriend, first lady, and the corresponding uh, ritual card. Uh, for draw power, I have Pot of Extravagance, you're not summoning from the extra deck. Uh, pot of Despair. Uh, the power of prosperity, uh, same reason. Uh, to your preparation of rights, because this will help you search out your child slime uh, to get the engine going and recover one of your ritual magic cards, if you know from the grave. If that so be the case. So, so yes, this this is just a proof of concept. I haven't gone online with it, but hey, these these are just ideas I'm bouncing around. Because listen, I'm gonna make this thing work. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make it work. Uh, now, some other ideas, you know, you can put in the Zaborg, the Mega Monarch, to do the Zaborg play. That's what this extra deck is based off of. You know, uh, graveyard triggers, so you search your deck for a Ritual Magic or Monster. Um, Fossil Warrior, you can banish, you can destroy one of your opponent's monsters. Entis triggers, destroy an opponent's card. When Pegasus, if it, you know, if you, one of your monsters is destroyed by battle or card effect, banish it, and you can send one of your opponent's cards back to the deck. And Tri Brigade, uh, Fearjet, the Baron Blossom. Uh, this allows you to draw a card and put another card into the deck. Uh, Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds. Uh, you could build a wind base uh, spirit deck very easily, and if you get this card out. Well, okay, your opponent can't special summon anything but wind monsters. Uh, another trick is Trickstar Reincarnation, um, and you can combine that with Drone Lockbird. So uh, you can banish your opponent's hand and droll so they cannot draw. So if you were to get the Yada play out and attack for battle damage, they cannot draw into it. They, they won't have a hand, and therefore you can just keep every turn, just keep summoning Yada Garasu and attacking. So yeah, this. This is, uh, <laughs> well, will this work? I don't know. But hey, that, that, that doesn't mean I'm not trying. So overall, when it comes to the ban list, um, sure. I mean, it does address a lot of problems. I just wish it would have addressed uh, all the, the, the other engines, all the floodgates that's causing a problem, that's making the game one-sided. It, it, it feels like Konami was so focused on unbanning old stuff as opposed to addressing the rest of the problem with the game as a distraction. Cause, cause I mean, like, yeah, like there were good things on the ban list, but I mean, I, I can still see what's going on. I, I don't think we'll have the way to see for a few weeks or so to see how the game plays out, if it's still gonna be healthy or not. But anyway, that's just my take on it. Uh, if you love the ban list, perfect overall i mean i think it's okay but there are some elements to it that i am very disappointed it's it's more or less about what got unbanned as opposed to more things i think should have taken the hit but anyway that's my take on it what is yours keep the discussion going and remember to be a good sport to play the game not the fame and listen this guy's gonna be a problem i will make him a problem <laughs> see ya